Setting up a Metapixel to run conversion ads to promote your music on Spotify is not exactly the most intuitive process. But today, I'm gonna to take the mystery out of setting up this essential tool for digital marketing. Whether you are a complete beginner or a seasoned veteran, I guarantee everybody will learn something new from today's video. What's up everyone, my name is Kyle and I'm the founder of Kylie Ally. We are a new type of digital marketing service that aims to help up and coming artists and indie record labels use digital marketing to get their music heard. This video assumes that you're using conversion campaigns for your digital music promotion, which is by the way what you should be using. I made a whole separate other video where I ran an experiment to compare conversion campaigns versus traffic campaigns, which is a common alternative. And uh, if you've got some time, go ahead and watch that video because that'll do a much better explanation. The star of the show in a conversion campaign is the Metapixel. That's a piece of code that Meta gives us. We go and embed that in a third party website and it enables us to collect data on how our customers respond to the ads from that third party website and send it back to Meta. In the context of music marketing, you show people your ad somewhere on Instagram or Facebook. We send them to a third party landing page provider such as Hypedit, Toneden, Feature FM, etc. You embed the pixel in the landing page and then the data that you gather from the landing page gets sent back to Meta to give us a continuous feedback loop that allows Meta to improve our ads as we go. We also need a landing page provider to create the landing page. Sometimes you hear this called a smart link, um, which we're going to use to track our conversion events. I actually made another video altogether that scientifically compared a bunch of the common providers and found that actually hyped it works best for the kind of digital marketing that I do. If you're interested in signing up for Hypedit, you could use the referral link that I have in the description below, and it would also help support the channel. All right, guys, we are now in the trenches of the Meta Business Manager backend, so I can show you how to create a pixel from scratch. And this is assuming you've already got a business account set up, so you're gonna go to business.facebook.com, and you're gonna get to a screen that looks something like this, where it says business settings in the top left corner, and you've got this left column which lets you navigate through all the various features and whatnot. The astute viewers among you will assume that clicking on the pixels tab will bring you to the page that lets you set up pixels. Wrong. That makes too much sense. Once upon a time this is actually where you would set up a pixel but it has since moved they've repackaged this into the data sets tab. So if you click on pixels, it'll actually give you an option to redirect. So you can click on this button, you know, view data sets or click on data sets in the left column. And that goes to the screen that we actually want to be on, which shows you all of the pixels that are connected to your current business manager account. I happen to have a bunch because I manage ads and data for a whole bunch of different clients. And I've even got a pixel created for my agency already called Kyle the Allies Pixel very creatively named. But if you're doing this for the first time, the list should be empty. And the way that you start by creating a new pixel is you click the blue add button. It's gonna tell you name this data set. Again, data set is the new name that they've given pixels. You can really name this anything you want, but I would say name it after the ad account that you intend to use it with. You only need one pixel for one meta ad account. You don't have to create a new pixel for every conversion event. You just make one and you should be set for life. So I'm gonna call this Kyle the Ally Pixel 2 because I'm incredibly creative at making names and I also can't type and speak at the same time. So Kyle the Ally Pixel 2 is what we're gonna be calling the brand new one. You're gonna click create and then a couple seconds later it's gonna work its magic and it's going to create a new pixel is going to have a new uniquely identifying ID number. It's going to be a good idea to just copy this and make sure you have this handy for when we go to set it up. And it's going to ask you how you want to connect to your website. This doesn't matter so much because like I said, we have a third party landing page provider like Hyped it that is going to let us do a manual integration. For now, just say I want Metapixel and Conversions API and then you can click next. And then also gives you an option to you know, either manually implement or use a partner integration. We're gonna do this all manually and it's gonna you know, walk you through this like tutorial thing. It doesn't exactly let you skip through it. The short and easy way to go through it is make sure you have got e-commerce and retail selected. We like the view content event even though we're not even gonna be using this. Just appease the machine and you can kind of click through the default settings. And then we get to the point where at the end it's gonna pull up events manager which shows you the pixel in the left column here with the ID number. The very next thing we have to do is actually activate it. For this part, 
you're going to want to make sure that you have some kind of landing page provider. There are free options out there in the form of Toneden. I don't prefer the performance of Toneden. Hypedit is a paid option. You will need the basic $10 per month tier, but you should consider that essential for the type of digital marketing that we are going to do. And if you do have Hypedit like I do, you can log into your account and I'll show you how to activate your shiny new pixel. So I just logged into my Hypedit account. I just went ahead and clicked on the smart links tab here. And this is basically the main feature that I use for my Hypedit subscription. So you're gonna wanna click the green button to create a new smart link. For this step, you don't, actually don't even need to use your song. You can just go to Spotify and just fish off any old song off of Spotify. So in this case, I'm just gonna grab whatever's at the top of what I've been listening to recently. We just need some link to a song to use as a placeholder so we can generate the landing page. So I'm gonna throw that song in there. Select a genre, this happens to be a drum and bass song. Click next. Artist and title are automatically scraped from Spotify. Looks great. And then, you know, this gets into the, the nitty gritty of the landing page setup, which might be a topic for another video, but for now, I prefer to use the hype to delete logo option and you could choose between light or dark scheme depending on what you think looks better for the artwork. I'm gonna rock with the dark mode for now. Link URL is usually just fine out of the box. Hyped it's got its own music discovery platform. If your song is a recent song, you can opt into this for extra exposure. Audio preview, I'm gonna turn off for now. This is really the part that we care about, the tracking pixels part. So you should flip back to the events manager and make sure you grab the ID number of the pixel that you just created. Again, in my case, that is a number that starts with 102. So we're gonna copy and paste that number. So copy, flip back to hyped it and paste that into place. So there we go, we've just added my brand new pixel ID to the landing page and Hypedit is gonna take care of all of the implementation in the back end that makes that code work to send data back to Meta. However, you might notice that there's a second box where it says conversions API access token optional. This is of course optional, however, I strongly recommend using it. To make a long story short, conversions API is basically a redundant way of doing what the pixel already does for us. It opens up a parallel stream for reporting that data back to Meta. So whereas the Facebook pixel is like a meta implemented tool, the conversions API is kind of collected on the server side of your third party landing page provider, not to get too technical. But having that layer of redundancy where the pixel and the API are both reporting data actually improves the quality of the data tracking. So this is something that came out in response to the iOS 14 rollout in 2021 that made everybody think the world was gonna end and advertising was gonna stop in its tracks. And this actually lets us get back to the kind of performance that we used to have before iOS 14 got so restrictive with the data tracking. If you want to set up the conversions API, it's actually just one extra fairly simple step. Flip back to events manager, make sure that your new pixel is selected, go to the settings tab, and then wait for it to load. Scroll down a whole bunch until you find this small blue text under the conversions API section, which says generate access token. You're gonna click on this, wait for about 10 seconds, and then it's gonna vomit a whole bunch of computer garbage onto your screen. This is another uniquely identifying key that identifies your conversions API. And unlike the MetaPixel, which is a static ID that always identifies your MetaPixel, that number never changes, the conversions API is generated fresh every time you click that button. If you have made it this far in the video, I salute you. And Uncle Sam wants you to subscribe to the Kyle the Ally YouTube channel for more updates about music marketing tutorials I've got coming up in the future. Check us out on all of our channels to stay up to date with the educational music marketing content that we're putting out all the time you are not going to want to miss it back to our regular scheduled programming so if you come back in seven days you might generate a new access token that looks slightly different than this one but it always points back to your conversions api so that's just one key difference between the pixel and the api so click here to copy the clipboard and then flip back to hyped it and throw that big mumbo jumbo of computer garbage into the second field for the access token and you should be good to go. And now you're using both streams of data to report information back to Meta to help with your ads optimization. 
So you're consistent with best practices. And then for our specific campaign, we actually don't have to bother with Google ads or TikTok pixels just because we're focusing on meta. Go to the confirmation, make sure all the details look right, and then click create. And it's gonna bring you to a, a splash screen that lets you copy the URL for your newly created landing page. We may as well just check it out to make sure it looks cool. So again, all we have here is Spotify and Apple Music, and you can click on either of these buttons to go to the page that it says it'll go to. But you're gonna copy that URL, flip back to the events manager again, and we're gonna wanna go to the test events tab. And it is essential that you test the pixel integration to make sure it's working. I always say, if I'm gonna build an airplane, I better check every bolt three times before that thing flies. So you're gonna click on the test events tab, and uh, click on the second option where it says confirm your website's events are set up correctly. Every time you set up a new landing page with your pixel, it is essential that you test this integration because it's key to making your campaign work at all. In this enter website URL field, you're gonna paste that URL for the landing page you just created and then click on open website. Now, one extra key is that you must be using Chrome as your browser to do this. The test events only works with Chrome. Click on open website and it will bring us to the landing page that we just created. Yay, so that looks good so far. You can flip back to events manager to confirm that the pixel has processed a hyped it smart link visit. So that's the first event that we're tracking. This is not the valuable one. Flip back to your landing page and click on one of these two buttons, either Spotify or Apple Music. Doesn't matter which one because they're treated the same. I'm gonna click on Apple Music for now and verify first and foremost that it actually goes to where you want it to go. So it looks like that worked. If you go back to the events manager, now we have hyped it smartly click that got tracked. This actually came up a couple times because I clicked on the button a couple times to test it. But the hyped it smartly click is the conversion event that we care about using for our conversion campaigns. The very next thing that you'll have to do is flip over to the overview tab where it shows you how the events are coming through your um, pixel. On the very first time that you run a conversion event, such as the hyped it conversion event through your pixel, it's going to take at least 10 or 20 minutes, sometimes even up to 24 hours for this conversion event to process. So what that means is that you won't see this conversion event show up in the overview tab for a while. So leave this tab open, come back in a little bit and you know refresh the page. Eventually you will see that instead of saying no activity received in the time frame, down here in this box, it'll actually say hyped it smart link click and hyped it smart link view. And you will have to verify these events to tell Meta that yes, these are events that I'm expecting to be sent through my pixel and I want to use them. So we'll take a little break and through the magic of video editing, we'll come back in a little bit and finish that last step. As I mentioned before, I started Kylie Ally, which is a digital marketing service that aims to help musicians like you do the very type of digital marketing that I talk about on this YouTube channel. I engage with musicians in the form of a consultant where you can hire me for professional expertise to answer your questions or help with setup, or you can hire me and my team in more of a full service capacity to take on your marketing projects on your behalf. If you're interested in learning more about what we do and how we could possibly work together, check out my website, kylethealli.com for more information and fill out the intro questionnaire on the contact me form on my website. And if working together seems like a good fit, we'll come back and reach out with next step. And before you leave this business setting screen where you created your pixel, you're gonna wanna make sure that you assigned yourself permissions to work on the pixel that you just created. I know that feels kind of silly, but that's kind of how it has to be done. And also assign the ad account that you want to use to run your ads permission to use your pixel as well. The way that you do that is with your pixel selected up here, click on assign people and find yourself in here. So click on your own name and give yourself full control over the pixel and then click assign. And that'll take a moment to take effect, click done and then click assign assets, find the ad account that you want to use to run your ads. In my case, I'm gonna use my agency ad account. Click the little checkbox next to that name and then click add. So now you've endowed yourself with permission to use your own pixel, as well as giving your ad account permission to connect to the pixel. And if you don't do this step, you're gonna end up going to set up your campaign and you won't be able to find your pixel as an option to select 
in the conversion campaign setup menu. So if that's the case, then you missed the step and you have to go back and do this. All right, so I've now given it about 30 minutes for that conversion event to process. And you know it's done processing when you flip back to the overview tab and you scroll down here, it now lists the two hyped conversion events that we registered, the hyped at smart link click and the hyped at smart link visit. The very last step that you need to do before you can actually use this in a campaign is verify the conversion event. And basically that means you let Meta know, yes, I'm expecting this information to come through the pixel and I wanna use it, so don't block it. This is something that they've implemented kind of recently and it's like an annoying step, but it's quite simple. You'll see there's a little red icon next to the conversions we just logged and it says custom events, blah, 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 can't be used until you confirm it. So click the blue button to say review. Acknowledge that you're gonna give away your firstborn child and the rights to everything you own to Meta, or I, I don't know actually what's in there. And then click confirm the custom event and then click the blue button again to confirm. And it's worth doing on both of the hype to conversion events. Even though the click is the only one I ever use, you may as well confirm both of them just in case you ever change your mind and need to use the other one. Uh, so just walk through the exact same process. And now the conversion event should be ready to use in a campaign. And if you wanna flip over to Ads Manager, I'll show you how you can plug it into your campaign. So we're back in the Ads Manager, ready to set up the conversion campaign. When you create a new campaign, it gives you the choice of a whole bunch of different campaign objectives. So what we call a conversion campaign has recently been repackaged into one of three possible objectives that you can choose from. So the first one is the engagement campaign. When you hover over it in the bottom right, you can see it says good for a whole bunch of things and it lists conversions as one of the things you can use it for. However, leads also allows you to run a conversion event and sales is the third campaign objective that will let you do this. As as far as which one performs best for our digital marketing, that's a subject for ongoing research and I will be making a video hopefully in October that goes over experimental results of a test that I'm going to run to compare all three of the objectives. But for now, we're going to choose the engagement objective just to pick one. You can click continue. Make sure you enable manual engagement campaign to set up everything, basically have all the options available to you. And assuming you go through the campaign setup menu just to put in you know, your daily spend, your total budget, whatever, the actual magic happens at the ad set level. So we'll click down one more level. This is where you plug in your pixel and the conversion event that we just defined. So make sure that in this conversion window here, you choose website as your data source because we're using the third party landing page is the website that we're tracking the data on. And then make sure you choose your newly created pixel. So in my case, Kylie Ally Pixel 2 is the one that I was using for the example. Select that and make sure that ID matches the one that you embedded in the landing page before and select the conversion event. Hyped it, smart link click is the event that I use for all of my conversion campaigns, for my own music, for my clients, etc. And that's really all you need to do to plug it in. And then by the time that you get to setting up the actual ad creative, which is closer to the end of the campaign setup process, you're just gonna wanna scroll all the way down to this tracking section. Make sure that website events is enabled and that the actual pixel that you wanna use with the correct ID number are listed here. And that's just another way that you could double check that everything is selected correctly in your setup. You should be ready to rock and roll now. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and stay up to date with all of the cool stuff that we've got cooking. And I hope to see you in the next video.